we are all human. We all have habits that are very hard to break when it comes to losing body fat, when it comes to losing weight. I'm going to say it. I'm going to make this video as raw as I possibly can when it comes to habits that I've had that I see other people constantly trying to break, the psychological aspect of it. So if you don't want to hear like some real life truth, you can leave, but don't. <laughs> I'm sort of kidding. Hit that like button, please, and please subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. And if you're coming back, I appreciate it as well. And we thank you, me and my family. But three of the biggest habits that I've had that have so hard to break when it came to losing fat and staying in shape. I'm 51 years old, and I know I'm going to say that quite a few times until my channel grows into <laughs> a million. But the idea of bad habits, and these are the three, and I know people struggle with the same things, but most people don't want to cover this. It was covered on some TV stations. It was covered by some famous celebrity, celebrity um, trainers. And I had a big crunch problem. If I put crunch up there, people are like, okay, what, that chips? Cereal, crunchy cookies, not soft ones, the crunch, yeah, the, the glass of milk, the dunk, the crunch or the soft and the just that from childhood carried over into adulthood and it really did and there's a psychological aspect of that. Not only was marketing done well but it was cheap, easy, and just readily available consistently, no matter where you were at, from the vending machine to the grocery store to the corner store, everywhere. It's just everywhere. You know, the, 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 you know, the, there's a 7-Eleven diet. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, with all of the, with, with all of that there, but the crunch part of it was very difficult. It still is to this day. I mean, it's who buys a bag of chips and says, I'm going to pour out a serving, right? Who buys a bag of popcorn and says, eh, I'm just going to eat just a serving. You know, there was a saying with some of the chip companies where who just eats one, right? Can't just eat one. Who just eats one? Or you look on the bag at the back of the bag, 21 chips. Who? Counts out 21 chips regularly when you buy a bag. No, you're buying the bag to attack it. Most of us. Not all of us, maybe. Well, moving ahead here. The second one for me was ice cream. Was the creaminess. I mean, that was a big part of growing up was going to get ice cream every week. You know, that for, as I grew up, I mean, like, you grow up and you're like, ah, I'm going to eat ice cream every day, right? Well, it was like that, sort of. You know, ice cream is delicious. You know, it, it, it's, 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 it's so prevalent. I mean, again, whole aisles dedicated to it. Companies that came out with different versions, like healthier versions, like I have 250 calories per pint, let's say, instead of, let's say, 800 to 1500 calories per pint, because who eats just one serving of an ice, ice cream out of a pint and measures that out? 95% of people, I promise you, probably don't. I was that person. I still am that person. But I do buy the 250 calorie ice creams. I don't buy four pints. <laughs> but most people don't remember ice cream coming in half gallons. Right? Most people don't remember that. It's still available in some places. But pints weren't a thing. I mean, what a pint costs today is what a half a gallon of ice cream used to cost back in the day. Like, I'm not going to go way back. But that was a very hard habit to break. And I'll see it on sale. And I'll get the habit almost kicks back, kicks back in. So what is this? That's two so far. And I'm going to go over this third one that involves more of a different blend. I had a very hard time breaking the actual habit of drinking calories like co coffees okay mostly 
And I really didn't get into the sports drinks. I did for a moment that had calories in it, 250 calories. You know the sports drinks and then the energy drinks. I was into those energy drinks for a moment, brief moment. But coffee has never gone away. I mean, for the last, let's say, 20 years. I started drinking coffee about 20 years ago. I never drank it before my 30s. Ain't that crazy? I never drank coffee, period, until I hit 30-ish. And I was drinking very famous coffee places and the, drinking the higher amounts and the holiday drinks and all of that. And it was an addiction of that, not just the sugar, but it also included the items from that specific, those specific places, bakery goods that were incorporated on, right? And it became, and then it turned into a reward system. You got rewarded for doing this on an app. And it was one of those things where it was like, it wasn't just that specific place. It was various other coffee shops and different versions but it took me making my own coffee into my own hands about five years into that where I started buying different coffees from over the world. Someone got me a, a subscription to that. And thanks to that person that did that because it really changed the way that I drank coffee because I started making it myself. I started measuring out calories myself. And some of the creamers I replaced with some of the more healthier keto creamers that are available because that was, you know, I wasn't into keto at that time, but I knew that drinking sugar wasn't an option. Drinking four, 200, 300, 400, 500 calories of sugar is not an option. When you get sugar that are, when you get a sugar item that is in triple digits of grams for one drink, there's something wrong, right? There should be, there, that, there's that trigger of like, okay, the, the, the psychological triggers of these items. And, I, and this is that real talk we all wanna have, that I really wanna have with a lot of my clients. And it ends up going that way. Because my drive that day to that specific spot for those calories really triggers me constantly to be like, wow, this is really something that's deeper than just psycho, just psychological. It's habit forming. It has something to do with the past. Or uh, for me, it was it, for me. A lot of my eating habits from eating pizza every Friday were stemmed from growing up and being in that environment, and it just carried over. And it tried to be try to incorporate it, and then being with other families that were doing the same thing. And it wasn't more so about abusing it, but some of us have different types, forms of that psychological aspect of whether it's growing up, whether it's, um, I, I, I don't want to get into the abuse center of just habitual eating, but a lot of calories, a lot of weight gain is, happens in front of a screen. You know, the big popcorn, the big soda, the big bag of chips. The overall sweet goodies that mix with all of the salt and all of that, all the salt craving. And that's th that to me right there. That's the third habit. It go, I mean, I, that you could break that down into sub subcategories there. But those three habits there are so difficult to break on anybody that I've ever coached because each one of them have their own psychological aspects to them. They can, and it's either a long-term thing. And it doesn't just, or it's never just, oh, I just started this last week. No, it's been a part. When you have excessive amounts of body fat on your body, those habits are there. We just sit in, sit in a home, sit behind a screen, whatever that is, and that habit doesn't, it's hard to break it. One of the other ways that I broke some serious habits, especially late night eating, late night crunching, cookies, candy, whatever it was, you know, the, I mean, gummy bears for goodness sake. Don't even get me started on that. But really, was me, I started going to the gym late at night because I didn't want to affect any of my workouts. 
I would, I would rather <laughs> starve. And I know that's a whole other habit, but my point being is I turned that habit, and I did that for years. I started working out like at, let's say, 7, 8 o'clock at night because then I knew I wouldn't eat. I would so much as fast and then eat when I got up in the morning. And my work, that it worked for an extended period of time. It really broke a lot of habits. Like it broke my late night eating. I don't late night eat at all. I don't early morning eat, but I really don't late night eat. I can go and see a movie and not get anything to crunch. I can bring something with me. And normally, really, it's a couple, it's protein bars, something like that, something that I've made that I can just put in my pocket and eat while I'm there. A can of, a can of seltzer water, something like that. I know that the, those are just different things for different people, but it's, it's, it's really about trying to trade something this for that, not eliminating it. Because eliminating pizza, for instance, and you have a very high pizza addiction, some people do. I've ran into that. It's about not only trying to make your own, but trying to make different versions of it. I got it to the point because I was, I was with somebody who was vegan for a very long time. I got to the point where I didn't even eat cheese on pizza. I know, crazy, right? Eliminating the cheese can, like, it's hard because that's why most people buy pizza. But it, it elim doing that for years, for probably three years where I didn't eat cheese at all on pizza. And when I finally started eating it again, it's like, wow, I really don't like this much cheese on pizza. So I was ended up making my own versions, ended up buying frozen, you know, um, lentil crusts, for instance, or that I made my own pizza, put it in and got my own, you know, sauce, for instance, I would make my own sauce. I know people don't have time for all of this, but it was those little, ha those big habits that turned into eliminating some things, but not totally. Because diets fail, guys and gals. They fail. 95% of people can lose a great deal amount of weight. Let's say they lose 30 pounds and they gain over half of that back over time after I mean, what's a 12-week diet? Oh, I'm going to go on a diet. Okay, that means that that's temporary. No, you got to go on a lifestyle. you got to eliminate some things long-term and substitute it for that, like I did for coffee. And I really don't drink. I drink almost 90% of my coffee is drank without anything in it. And the only time that I really drink calorie, high amount of calories in coffee is if I make a bulletproof coffee. And it's included in my caloric intake. And the takeaway here, and this is final, is start tracking your calories. Just track them. Focus on that one thing. And then you get your macros to the point where you're focused on protein more than anything. I know I can say this in every video from this point for the next 400 videos. I can say this exact thing. And it won't change. Every diet works. Your lifestyle will work for fat loss is if you have a caloric deficit in your diet. You track the calories in the beginning, learn what portions look like, even those bad habitual foods. Incorporate them in there. Get different versions. Plug in different versions. Become part of a community that will help you because most people I know that have sustainable long-term weight loss, maintaining it, are part of a community. If I wasn't part of my community of people, yeah, I would probably still be because my community of people typically are my clients that I've had friends for so long to the point where I'm like, wow, without them, it would be, compl it would be kind of different. And that community can help you track calories, Get yourself into a place where you can get your macros figured out and become part of a community and get that help. Not only will it help you psychologically, but it's a proven fact. You will become a lot more successful long term, not just short term diets, not just short term fixes, but that evergreen part of who you really want to be and 
and realize that most of these habits that we have, that you have, are really hard to break. And sometimes, most of the time, you need help doing it. That's it. I'll talk to you guys soon. Later.